And welcome back once again to the Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix Critical Mode Any% percent Speedrun Tutorial. In this episode, we will be going over our final second visit of the run, that being Land of Dragons. I don't think there's anything to talk about before getting into it, so let's go. So we'll land and immediately be greeted with a menu, but we don't need to do anything in it, so we'll just back right out of it. Um, I recommend switching your command menu over to Limit if it's not already there. Uh, before entering into the Riku fight, because we're going to be going into Trinity Limit pretty quickly. So this is a fight with just Sora, so our only utilities here are Trinity Limit and Limit Form, I mean aside from Sora's normal kit. We're going to open it up by immediately, like, mash this one out, immediately doing a ground combo, uh, locking on, so it's going to be slide dash, uh, full combo, single finisher, reflect, and then going into Trinity Limit. You do have to be pretty quick about this one, because Riku is going to immediately do some sort of attack that your Reflect will uh, guard against. And then he can either decide to do a short attack where he doesn't move very far, or one where he moves a long ways away. And that's why we want to do Trinity Limit, because if he moves a long ways away, that's the only way that the Reflect is going to be able to carry over and hit him. So in this example, I don't think he does... Oh no, he does. So he does go a long ways away, and I do the uh, full combo uh, guard break reflect trinity limit to catch him. And as you probably know, this fight is pretty dang random. Um, Riku can kind of do whatever he wants, and we're really just going to be reacting here. So my general philosophy at this point is do one more ground combo uh, as Sora go into limit form, do, or land one Zantet combo, and then do a, um, what, what was called, the, the, the slide combo, <laughs> uh, Sonic Blade, sorry about that, um, that's gonna be enough to kill, or to put him to his, whatever the health barrier that ends the fight, um, but kind of the order you do those is not going to be consistent. You're really going to be reacting to what he's doing. So sometimes even after this first Trinity Limit, he'll even immediately go away again. And then if that's the case, I'll make the decision to use the second part of Trinity. It's really, you're, you're making it up as you go along, just doing your best to land the damage in the certain situ situation. I decide the best option here is to go for my ground combo now. And ideally... I would have gone immediately into limit form, but I, I didn't do it in time, and he hit me, and I got I got knocked away. But I went into it. Um, get hit here again, unfortunately, as I'm trying to get as I'm trying to pursue him. Um, but then I, I come in, do a Zantet, and then do a Sonic Blade, and that's enough to end the fight. If if I need a little more damage, would have done another Sonic Blade. Um, you really want to make sure you end this fight in limit form. Losing your drive here is going to give us incredibly slow movement getting to the next fight, because uh, we need to go into wisdom form for the movement speed. So make sure you end the fight in limit form. Uh, but that's pretty much all there is to this one. It's a pretty quick and easy one, but also one you really, you really react to. You come in with some sort of plan, but you have to react to his movements. Um, I'd say that's enough for that fight. Let's keep going. So we're going to pull Mulan out of the party in this quick menu, but that's our only menu. So we have Donald and Goofy with us, and we're immediately going to go into wisdom form for some movement here. I do a fun little fire to get over this block in the road. And then there's some interesting uh, movement I do here. Uh, my first quick run, I'm holding about 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in order to directionalize myself towards the, uh, towards the cliffs here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump in the air and do or get to like a full hop and then do a fire. And that fire is going to go after this Nightwalker that just spawned and allow me to pursue him and then get on top of this uh, this rock formation without needing to grab the ledge. So it's just a, a fun little movement tech that speeds you up, saves some time. As you see there, don't fall off as I almost just did. And quick run our way over to the checkpoint continuing to quick run through here just movement but then we will revert from wisdom form before we go into this next fight and i like to revert and then immediately turn my command menu to limit because we will be using trinity limit in this next fight uh this fight 
As far as I know, it's not 100% consistent. You're gonna do the same thing every time. All it is is magnet, trinity limit, use the ultima, which is the square push, and then use the finisher. People theorize that there's a camera angle that potentially makes this consistent, but if it exists, I don't know what it is. So generally, I just keep, I just don't touch my camera at all. I magnet, use the ultima, use the finisher, Sometimes it kills, sometimes if it doesn't. If it doesn't, usually there'll be like two assault riders left with just like a little bit of health that you need like two hits to kill. You know, you'll just do ground combos on them. I wish it was consistent, but I unfortunately haven't found a way. Wow, great. Both courtyard frights and land of dragons aren't consistent as far as we know. That's fun. But anyways, that's that fight. There's not much more to talk about aside from it can be stupid. But so we'll move on quick run on over into the palace and we're gonna get to another fight that unfortunately is also kind of inconsistent um just because there's a lot of enemies in this fight and they don't always move and position themselves the way we want them to what we're going to do is we're going to start this fight off with a vicinity break trying to provoke all of these enemies to come in and hit us so that we can reflect them but don't do it immediately wait for these dusks to come in because your target reticle is going to start on this sniper and then move to the dusk. But notice these dusks come in like using their long body form. So it's in the air right now. And if you were to attack immediately, you would do an aerial dive. So that's why we want to wait until they get onto the ground all the way. And then I'll do a vicinity break. It's basically by waiting, I'm making sure I get this vicinity break. Um... So we're going to have that happen. All the enemies are going to come after us. Time your reflects here so that you're doing it right when these guys are about to hit you. And we're actually going to do two. The reason we do two is because some of these snipers will retaliate with doing a laser. And if you do two, it's going to cover that laser as well. If you just do one and then try to go into a magnet, which will be our next step, you might get hit by that laser and then the fight's just going to get really messy. So do two. So reflect, reflect, magnet, finishing leap then our goal here is within two hits to kill all of the enemies that are left that's not a guarantee it just depends if you are lucky with your reflex and your finishing leaps and how much everybody was getting hit getting knocked around in the magnet but hopefully it does kill everything in two hits a lot of times it'll kill in just one because the reason we want that is we want these enemies to die, and then immediately the next wave of spice snipers will spawn and get caught in that same magnet. We will land, they will retaliate, usually with a swipe attack, although sometimes all of them will go into their long wind-up uh, snipe attack, which at that point you won't be able to reflect it and you'll just have to do a magnet finishing leap and just try to beat them up. Um, but hopefully what'll happen is you'll kill all these guys. There, I did it in two hits. These guys spawned, I land on the ground, I reflect, magnet, finishing leap, and just finish them off. I throw in a duck flare just to kill potentially a little bit faster. Not necessary. The only reason I do that is really in case one of those snipers somehow didn't get caught in the magnet, which can happen every once in a while, and is potentially lining up a shot that's going to hit you, and I'll just go into the mega duck flare to, to take care of him quickly. Um, but that's the sniper's fight. It's really short and quick, but unfortunately has randomness involved. Um, but with that out of the way, we'll move to our final fight in Land of Dragons, which is Stormrider. I'm just going to do some quick, quick runs backwards here. And once again, want to make sure our command menu is on limit here, because that's what we're going to be doing pretty quickly, not immediately. So at the start of this fight, we're going to do two hits. Uh, you're just going to be auto-targeted onto the left horn, which is the one we want to target. I'm going to do two hits, I'm going to lock on, and then I'm going to hang on. So I'll press triangle after the two hits. Hit, hit, lock on, triangle. And I, n I am now preparing to use Duck Flare. So once he finishes flipping, I'm going to immediately get off and walk towards the horn. So I hop off, and I'm going to walk towards the horn and use Duck Flare. I don't use Duck Flare immediately, because if you use Duck Flare immediately, this first initial flare is just going to hit his body and it's not going to hit the horn, which is what takes damage. So I walk forward and then I use it. And then I'm going to do a full combo with two finishers. And then I'm going to use a flare during that second finisher. 
he's gonna do like the little symbol sounds as he starts his like thunder attack during that i'm going to do one extra little hit in here and then once he does the thunder attack then i'm gonna go immediately into mega duck flare and during this mega duck flare i'm going to do a ground combo with one finisher and then a finishing leap but what's really important here is I'm going to do it slowly because during this time he is going to be turning his body to the right and if I do this combo too quickly I will do the finishing leap before he's finished turning his body and it's going to end up whiffing the damage and potentially leaving me in a spot that I'm too far away to continue attacking the horns. So I'm going to let this play in real time so you can kind of see how I'm doing the Mega Duck Flare, but then doing this combo slowly. So watch what that looks like. So normally we're like, bah, 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 but that, I'm there I'm kind of like, duh, 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 duh. I, that sounds stupid, I know, but that's kind of in my head what's going on as I'm doing this combo slowly. Because you want to make sure his turn is done when you do the finishing leap, so all the damage is landing. And then we're going to go Aerial Spiral, two horizontal slashes, two finishers to get as much damage as possible on these horns. Basically, if, as, if you can get your damage during this segment to about, so to three bars and about here-ish on his health bar, you'll be fine. That's all you need. And this sequence of combos, particularly that slow ground, com or that slow ground combo, that'll put you in that situation. And here you see I even have way more than that. It's kind of random. Unfortunately, your duck flare can, or your mega duck flare can decide to be either hitting his horns on his head or the horns on his back. And I'm not really sure how it makes that decision. Um, but if it's not hitting the horns on the head, it, you're not going to get quite as much damage. You'll probably be more around here. But again, that's not a big deal. It's totally fine. We'll fall off of him now as he flips over. And we're going to summon Stitch. And Hope Stitch gives us MP. In this example, he does, which is very nice of him. And you can throw in a couple of Magnets. Magnets is our only way to do damage on Storm Rider when you're on the ground. He's immune to Thunder. So I do a couple of Magnets just to get a little bit of extra damage on him. Um, if you're under damage, this could be a little more important, but it doesn't hurt to do it. We're just sitting there waiting for him to come down with his slide attack. So I might as well do it. And then I'm going to position myself. See this line? The, the, the thicker line here before the, the, the tiles get really wide. I want to sp stand right around here. And when he comes down, I'm going to dismiss Stitch and then do two quick runs to reflect his slide attack and then use the reaction command. The reason I do this is because Donald has a tendency to die here. And this is the best way that I have found to try to keep the boys alive. Uh, they'll spawn in around you and the quick runs will give you some space that you'll be able to reflect and use the reaction command before Storm Rider can get to and hit and kill Donald. So I'm going to dismiss and then start quick running over, reflect, and use the Vertico Toss RC. Very cool. And do plenty of damage. Basically, as long as you are within the two bars here, so if you have two bars here and damage here, you should be able to kill at this point if you do your combos properly. Um, if Donald dies, that's not too big a deal. We'll just potion him first before we go into the duck flare, obviously. Um, but we'll immediately start this duck flare and go into a combo. Two horizontal sl slashes. Do your f do one of the flares during your second horizontal slash and do two finishers. If Donald died and you had to potion him, only do one finisher. If you do a second finisher, it's going to launch you into a bad position over here. And then you'll have to do some walking to get back to his horns and probably lose out of damage during the Mega Duck Flare. Um, but so flare, two finishers. We're going to land. His head's going to move up. And right around here is when we'll start our Mega Duck Flare. And then we'll go into uh, aerial dive, aerial spirals that we've seen before. So just like that, I'm locked onto this uh, horn and standing around here when I do my aerial dive. The reason I do that is because then I might be potentially hitting both these horns, which is going to increase our damage even more. Um, and that's also why I'm not doing the aerial dive, aerial spiral, two finishers during this part. Because having those two targets be there, that makes aerial dive, aerial spirals alone more optimal. So I'll do one set of those and then another set, and then go into horizontal slash uh, finishers at that point um, if, you're, if you haven't killed yet, and hopefully that should be enough to kill. 
as long as you are below that three bars that I was showing, it should be plenty. Um, so let me just show that uh, sequence again during this duck flare, what it looks like. Duck flare, two horizontal slashes, flare, two finishers, and mega duck flare. See how I position myself to try to uh, connect with both horns? I When I come down here and land, I, I walk back a little bit this direction first before I start it so that I'm hopefully hitting both of them. That's what you want to do here to increase your damage. Um, but yeah, that is the end of Land of Dragons and the end of Second Visits. Second Visits really blast by. They're really run and gun segments, but there is still a lot that can go wrong, so you do want to sp spend plenty of time on it. Um, we'll be getting well into Endgame in these next episodes, so get excited for that, and I will see you soon.